a Frenchman has set up to cross the Atlantic Ocean in a barrel-shaped orange capsule, using ocean currents alone to propel him. Jean Jacques Savin, 71, left El Hierro in Spain's Canary Islands and hopes to reach the Caribbean in as little as three months. His reinforced capsule contains a sleeping bunk, kitchen and storage. He will drop markers along the way to help oceanographers study Atlantic coins. The weather is great. I have got a swell of one meter, three foot, and I am moving at two to three kmh, he told that news agencies by telephone. For the time being my capsule is behaving very, very well and I have got favorable winds forecast until Sunday. Mr. Savin is a former military paratrooper and has also worked as a park ranger and a pilot. He believes ocean currents alone will carry his resin-coated plywood vessel about far 500,000 800 miles to the Caribbean, maybe Barbados. Although I would really like it to be a French island, like Martinique, I called a lope, he joked. That would be easier for the paperwork and for bringing the barrel back. The barrel is 3 meter long and tall, 10 meter wide with 6 square meters of living space. There is a porthole in the floor through which Mr. Savin can watch passing fish. His stores include a block of white grass and a bottle of soap turns, white wine for New Year's Eve. He also has a bottle of red wine. To celebrate his 70 20 birthday on 40 January, the markers he drops along the way will help oceanographers from the Chicomas International Marine Observatory to study coins. Two Scandinavian women tourists have been found dead in Morocco with cards to their necks, the country's interior ministry said. Both bodies were found near the town of Imola in the High Atlas mountain range, near the foot of North Africa's highest peak, Mount Tepco. The women, from Denmark and Norway respectively, have not yet been named. A police investigation has been launched into their deaths, the Interior Ministry statement said. A popular tourist attraction has become the latest Chinese company to show solidarity with Hu Awa's chief finance officer, Meng Wanzhou, who was arrested in Canada on 1 December. Shannon Mountain Scenic Park in eastern Hainan province said it would waive the $9.40 yuan ticket fee for anyone carrying a Hu Awa phone. Miss Meng, who was given bail in Canada, faces extradition to the United States on charges of breaking Iran sanctions. Her case has up tensions with China. Use Huawei phones, shoot grand photos on the mountain, a notice on the Shannon Park's social media account said, We wish friends around the world, who support Huawei's success and bliss. The offer would last until 29 December, the South China Morning Post reported. But it was met with some criticism among China's social media users, who claimed it was discriminatory. Who are way full owners are being offered other enticements to be can get a 20% discount at a border in Beijing. Seen in Beijing, bring a who are way full and get 20% off. Similar to this story we covered yesterday, HTTPS. T. QXL19YPQLPIC. Twitter. Com Soccer Love. End of Twitter post by Atlu Ocean G. At least one firm has threatened to penalize anyone buying Apple products. A few days ago, Manpad Shenzhen, based lead and display manufacturer, offered subsidies to any employees buying Huawei phones. It also pledged to fine anyone who bought an Apple iPhone. United States prosecutors, a lab misman, 46, used the Huawei subsidiary called Skycom to evade sanctions earlier on between 2000 and May and 2014. They also alleged she publicly misrepresented Skycom as being a separate company from Huawei and that she deceived banks about the true relationship 
between the two companies. Miss Man, who is the daughter of Hu Awell's founder, has denied any wrongdoing and said she will contest the allegations. Life of Hu Awell's high flying errors. The United States has been investigating the Chinese telecoms giant, the world's second largest smartphone maker, since 2016. Believing that it used Skycom to bring United States manufacturing equipment and millions of dollars in transactions to Iran in violation of sanctions, Ms. Man's detention comes amid an increasingly acrimonious trade dispute between Washington and Beijing. China is angry at her detention, saying she has not violated any laws. Beijing has threatened severe consequences. Unless Canada releases the executive, since her arrest, two Canadians, a former diplomat and a businessman, have been detained in China on suspicion of harming national security. United States President Donald Trump said last week that he might intervene in the United States Justice Department's case against this man if it would serve national security interests. I'll help achieve a trade deal with China if I think it's good for what will be certainly the largest trade deal ever made, which is a very important thing. What's good for national security? I would certainly intervene if I thought it was necessary. He told Reuters news agency. Canada reacted by urging Mr. Trump not to politicize the situation. Our extradition partners should not seek to politicize the extradition. Process. I use it for ends other than the pursuit of justice. Foreign Minister Christie of Finland said the United States military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group and was about being six air strikes in Somalia. Five air strikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28. It said in a statement. This were the deadliest terror attacks in Somalia since November 2017, when the United States said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of air strikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the United States in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at List of 400 people have been killed in air strikes since the beginning of 2017, far more than the previous 10 years combined. The latest strikes bring to at least far to the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017. The United States has a huge military base in neighboring Djibouti. From where it launches attacks on the militants, Mr. Trump gave the United States military greater authority in March 2017 to attack militants in Somalia. Traditionally, United States presidents have been wary of intervening in Somalia since the special forces soldiers died fighting militias in the capital Mogadishu in 1993. A battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. No civilians were killed in the latest air strikes, which were carried out in coordination with the Somali government. The United States military said, alongside our Somali and international partners, we are committed to preventing Al Shabaab from taking advantage of safe havens from which they can build capacity and attack the people of Somali. The United States Africa Command said Al Shabaab, which is linked to Al Qaeda, has not yet commented on the latest strikes. Somalia-based security think tank the Higher Al Institute said in a report published in November that Al Shabaab had been forced to change tactics following the upsurge in air strikes. The institute said the group was now conducting fewer mass attacks on military bases. But attacks on government offices and businesses which refused to pay it taxes had increased markedly. The United States State Department 
in its most recent report on terrorism, described Somalia as a terrorist safe haven and said Al Shabaab remained a threat. Despite suffering setbacks, the group retained control over large parts of the country and the ability to carry out high profile attacks using suicide bombers, explosive devices, mortars, and small arms, the report added. To Scandinavian women tourists have been found dead in Morocco, with cuts to their necks, the country's interior ministry said. Both bodies were found near the town of Imleo in the High Atlas mountain range, near the foot of North Africa's highest peak.